Hey. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening to you, Prof. Good evening to all our participants joining us from uh, on Zoom and also on Facebook. So uh, tonight we have again our Saturday night session. Uh, Ask the experts uh, brought to you by PRKPP and Fit Unit. So it's actually a, a collaboration uh, to combine mental health, physical health, uh, and wellness in general. Um, you have to have a fit mind. You have to have a fit body. Uh, for you to enjoy good uh, body, mind, and spirit, right? So tonight, uh, we are going to talk about uh, part two of uh, being mindful, focus attention on breathing. So how do we practice the art of focus uh, attention? So last week, Prof. Muhammad has uh, helped us to uh, give, help us to kickstart uh, part one about mindfulness and a little bit on how to do deep breathing um, and how do we practice it. I hope everybody has practiced it throughout the week since uh, last Saturday. Um, and so, yeah, so the floor is yours, Prof. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia. Very good evening to everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, so once again tonight, we have our session. Uh, we already have started our so-called mindfulness workshop. Uh, so this is session number two. Uh, Inshallah, we'll have several sessions. We'll go not only into the breathing, we also will do other aspects of the mindfulness in terms of our thoughts, in terms of our behavior, and in terms of our emotion. So uh, right now, let me just share with you my slide to start with. Okay, I hope you can see the slide. Is that okay? Is it clear for you to see the slide? Yes, clear. All right, good. Okay, this is what we call uh, uh, the mindfulness workshop. So I take up this slide just to tell you that this uh, every Saturday we will again look into ourselves with regard to being mindful, how to be mindful, or to moment to be mindful and in fact uh what i saw last week was everyone was very mindful about the class itself about the session that we had uh, not only based on the breathing but basically uh you all are in here today with a particular intention wanting to know more about mindfulness that is already number one criteria of being mindful that you have an intention and subsequently, I noticed that you are all the time in the present moment with me. Again, that is what we call being mindful because you are in the present moment. And then thirdly, you was able to, I believe, give a focused attention to the session until at the end after one hour or so. Uh, so I believe that all of you has got a lot a uh, good idea about what mindfulness is all about. That uh, uh, we try to do what we call mindful breathing and show you uh, how it is to start with. So we were focusing on just actually the, the element of being mindful about your breath and about your breathing. We have not gone into what we call breathing meditation yet, right? But today, I will help you to induct into this kind of a situation where not only we are mindful now towards the class, but again, we are going to relook at what we call mindful breathing. And subsequently, how can we then make that mindful breathing become a breathing meditation? And breathing meditation, obviously, uh, you will benefit from the uh, okay. So uh, to read, uh, okay. I think there's some noise there. I hope. Uh, I'm not too sure what is happening, but there's some noise there. Okay, yeah. just to recapitulate, mindfulness is okay. Mindfulness is simply being aware 
of your present, of what is happening now, and while it is happening. So it is at the present moment, you are fully conscious about it, you are fully aware, you give your focused attention, and you actually have a purpose with the very strong intention of what you are doing, what you want to achieve, and how at the end of the day, you become mindful of every session that you have or every moment that you have. In this case, hopefully, for today, we will be mindful for this one hour. And subsequently, again, we have to uh, start doing it and put it in action. Always remember that this knowledge is power, but knowledge without action is actually, it will render useless. Uh, so it's important, like what uh, Coach Francis has been saying, Coach Kamisha has been telling us that we need to put what we know into practice. So this is a very powerful uh, statement. Uh, this is another one that we can also use. Knowledge without action is wastefulness. And also action without knowledge is foolishness. So that's why we are here today. Uh, so that we can share our knowledge, our experience what we have gone through, how we do it, how we see it, how we perceive it, how we understood it. These are all very important aspects. And maybe we can help each other to get it better, to make it better, to do correction if there's something that is not right, that is not proper. So that is the reason why we call this a workshop. It will become a training session and possibly also at the same time, it become a coaching session. And uh, Coach Francis and Coach uh, Felicia can help us also with exercise and breathing. Because to actually sometimes to even realize your breathing is only when you put yourself into some kind of effort nature of doing things. While you were walking, while you were running, then you feel about the breath most more easily. If not, when you are sitting quietly, the breathing can be somehow not be noticed. So here I want to talk about before we go further, just a little bit, I will be quick with the theory part of it. Uh, we have to know that our mind, uh, we have uh, three uh, mind. We have the conscious mind, that is when we are fully aware, when we are awake. Even then, when we are awake, we actually flit into the subconscious mind. And the conscious mind is what you do when you think about things, when you critically assess things. The subconscious mind is actually what you are. You don't realize even a lot of time, we don't even realize what we are. But if you are uh, actually a person who is fully, fully aware, you may also develop what we call the super conscious mind. This is basically who you are. You know your soul, you know your authentic self. So it's very important. You must learn how to use all this and must learn to take note about your subconscious mind, about your subconscious uh, mind, and about your superior conscious mind, super conscious mind. As you know, uh, conscious mind, actually, this is the reason why we are putting this forward. Because conscious mind actually can program your subconscious mind. So when you are very conscious about things, you can actually reprogram your subconscious. Unfortunately, your subconscious has already been programmed and actually you have got the majority of your wakeful life actually is operated in the subconscious mind. That's why subconscious mind covers about 90% of your awake time. You have only about 10% of that day when you're fully awake that you are fully conscious about what is going on and then after that, you flip back into the subconscious mind. But what I'm trying to say now is that if you practice mindfulness, obviously, your mindful, conscious mind can reprogram the subconscious mind to change your beliefs and the emotions and the habits. So this is basically uh, what this slide uh, wants you to focus on. So what are the conscious mind? There is the willpower, the, logic, the logical thinking, and the critical thinking. 
the subconscious mind talk about your belief, about your emotions, about your values, something about your intuition. And so here, if you were to note, as I possibly has mentioned to you last week, basically, we are running our life based on science uh, investigation. Only 5% of the day, we are operating using our brain and our nervous system at the conscious mind level. And 95% of the day is actually we dwell into what we call the programs in our subconscious mind. So now, why we want to practice mindfulness, we are going to change this and reverse this so that we become 95% conscious about what we are doing, how we are feeling, what kind of thoughts that we have, and then the subconscious mind will then take the back seat. That is very important because all this while we allow our subconscious mind to take over things. When our subconscious mind takes over things, we tend to drift and we tend to become mindlessness. So here again, it's mentioned that we operate from the conscious mind less than 5% of the day. Unless the subconscious mind has the same programming as our conscious mind. If ever we tell you to have a positive thinking, positive psychology, it doesn't work. Because you know your subconscious mind is so strong. If it is already negative psychology, it is already negative thinking situation. Even you try with your will to change that, it may be very difficult. So that's why now, your conscious mind must take over, must take control, must actually change the subconscious mind, how they see things, how they look at things. This is the reason why we are trying to do mindfulness. So as you know, habits, this is basically what is happening right now because our subconscious mind is the one that is in charge. We actually have what we call automatic habit. The habit that come without even we need to think. It is like a reflex habit. Example, actually, this so-called automatic habit can be equal to what we call the brain stem function with regard to our breathing, with regard to our heart rate, because that goes automatically. We don't even control it, right? But it will come and we can see the changes when either the autonomic nervous system has been triggered, either sympathetic or parasympathetic in that nature. But once we are in the automatic habit, we don't really know what we are doing. So that's why it's very important. We need to now change our habit. So from the old habits, we have to create a new habit. In this case, we are trying to actually push to you the idea that you have to be fully aware. You have to be mindful about two things right now that you are in. One, mindful about the current session class that you are having. Because you want to have a very positive outcome. To get more knowledge about what mindfulness is, to learn how to get it done, and subsequently later can apply and do what you need to do to change or transform yourself from the old habit to the new habit. So here, obviously, you have to put your brain, your mind to be active, and you have to train your brain actually to create this new habit. Until, unless we make it fully aware, fully conscious, you are not in control. So make it that you are in charge and you can control your conscious mind, can control the subconscious mind. So as you know, the benefits of uh, mindfulness, obviously I need to stress this part of it because I want you to appreciate why we are pushing this idea why you need to be mindful in anything, everything that you're doing. Why mindfulness need to be the majority of your wakefulness time as compared to your rest time when you're sleeping. Obviously, you don't need to be mindful about it as much, but sometimes it is also very important. Being mindful about your sleep, about where you sleep, about the danger that you are in possibly. Without knowing that, maybe you're not fully aware what can happen. So sometimes even sleep also need to be mindful, especially for your safety and security. So the benefit covers the physical benefit, 
and the mental benefit. Here you can see what we are seeing and what we are trying to tell you, what we are trying to actually share with you is that all of us actually are stressful. Uh, you know, we experience a lot of stress, and some of them have uh, anxiety, have uh, depression, mentally uh, not in uh, how should I say not stable. Uh, we cannot focus. Uh, we have you know bad, uh, poor self-esteem. That is very important for us to now to take note why mindfulness is very important. It can improve and it can help to reduce all these things that I mentioned. And subsequently, in the physical aspect also, your body can help you to sleep better. You can actually reduce pain and improve your, your functioning, the respiratory functioning, the cardiac functioning, your digestive functioning. These are all the reflex eh, that is uh, under the brain stem function, right? The, uh, the heart, the respiration, and the digestion. And also then it can give you energy. So this is very important. If you realize this benefit, I don't think so you will just want to ignore being mindful. So it is something that is there with you. The only thing is that all this while, it was never properly emphasized. And again, as you see, uh, this is the other part of it beside uh, the one I mentioned about pain, about anxiety, about stress, how do it comes your, your mind and how it comes your body, uh, how it integrates the emotion. It can also actually help resolve a lot of past traumas. Uh, quite a number of times, actually, what we, we are now, what we experience now, is because of our past experiences that we had. We call, we call it past exposure, uh, childhood trauma. Uh, so that is who we are now because of how we have been programmed uh, in our subconscious mind to the developmental process that we had, especially in the seven years of, first seven years of life. Here's just another graphic way of looking at it. So uh, you, can, you can just see it. It's much uh, about the same as the first two slides. So basically, it would help a lot of, uh, it booster your cognitive to start with. It can reduce your blood pressure, reduce your stress. Uh, in fact, it also can battle or actually help out the immune system. And at the end of the day, immune system become better. It can fight against any kind of inflammation. Problem with our physical health is all about inflammation within the system that we have. And the inflammation is due to our immunity system that is actually weakened. So basically, that is the part of mindfulness. And this is where I want to emphasize to you that mindfulness is important because it is something to do that we have not been using it very well. We have been allowing ourselves to be mindlessness, the opposite of mindfulness. And because of that, that is who we are right now, what we are right now, because of this mindlessness that we allow us to continue controlling ourselves. So that part is the mindful part. And now we look into basically the aspects of what we can be mindful of. And I can tell you the most important thing right now to be mindful of is basically your breathing. Because breathing, besides, as I said, the heart rate, the blood pressure, and the digestion or the GIT system, the breathing is the one that you need to regulate very well. And in fact, if you can regulate your breathing, you can regulate your heart rate, you can regulate your blood pressure, and you can regulate even your parasympathetic. That means your relaxation, rather than even though you are stressed up in the sympathetic mode, you can always change that sympathetic mode to parasympathetic mode. So everything then calms down, you become much, much better. So here I want to tell you basically today, our role today in breathing, even though normal adult respiratory rate is 12 to 20 per minute, breath per minute. But our role today is trying to regulate our breathing as possible low as 12 breath per minute. Because that is what we're trying to achieve. Because what happened basically, if you were to look at this slide, all this while, we are not aware of our breathing because it was a very shallow upper chest breathing. As I told you, to, to put your hand on the chest, you can't even feel that it move up because it was only shallow breathing. 
So now, if we make aware of our breathing, at least we get back to so-called our normal breathing. And our normal breathing will then help to get the gas exchanges much properly. So this is what we are trying to do right now. Okay, so the question is, most important, always get back to your breath. Just have time to look at your breath. So I hope you have tried out. And the time that you have to try out is because you must be mindful about it. And if you can actually have a five minute in every hour to be mindful about it, so that actually will help you to gain better and better control of being mindful about your breath. Not the med breath meditation yet, of just being mindful about your breath. So I hope each and every one of you has actually tried that out. As I said, it will be a waste knowing the knowledge, but not actually trying to do it. There are quite a number of issues usually uh, about changing old habit to a new habit. Uh, one of the key that we have we always noted is it's very difficult to change. Let's call it resistant to change. Resistant to move from old habit to a new habit. But if you see that that intention is there, the goal is good, you can achieve what you want to achieve, so why not give it a try? So from today onward, make it more effort. Put more effort. Do it every hour. Give a five minute for it, right? Like uh, Coach Francis, Coach Felicia has given us uh, some of the visual about how just to follow the instruction, a very simple visual with regard to, you know, just deep breathing deeply, hold on for a while and breathe up. And today I will show you some of this method. But this is how you can actually, a simple taking what we call a deep breath, right? Breathing through your uh, inhale through your nose is like actually you're trying to smell flower, right? And then when you exhale, it's as though you are trying to blow up the candle. Slowly inhale so that you can feel the sensation and then blow it out through your mouth so that you can, and as it's possible, right? There's another way. You have to put the candle a little bit far out. Just imagine that the candle is far, so far out that you have to blow off the light of the, uh, the flame on the candle. So you try your, your best to actually do it and blow up your breath. Okay. So did you know that deep breath is actually the strongest self-healing me mechanism? So this is what I was, I'm trying to impress. Your breath is actually your medication. Your breath is actually your personal management. You don't need anyone else to help you out. You can do it. The only problem with all of us is that we are not aware of it. We are not knowledgeable about it. Which in fact we have it but we tend to ignore it because we are ignorant or we tend to just waste it because we are actually mindless or we thought that there's nothing there for us to look into it because we have not been actually challenged. Just imagine if you got COVID-19 and suddenly you reach a stage three level of COVID-19 infection. And that's when you are looking for the oxygen. The oxygen saturation has gone down below 95. You are struggling for air. And now only you realize, oh my God, I have to do a proper breathing. So this is what actually you need to understand because you know the breathing, the deep breathing is the one that we want you to do. So just actually take a deep breath. And in this case, you be mindful about your breath, right? There are a few things that we need to know. Sometimes what we call, we can do the count, the breath count, right? You can breath count from inhale and then pause, and then you exhale, you can count the numbers. There are many ways of doing it, all right? And obviously you can visualize your breathing, all right? And you can visualize something that is good actually. Uh, sometimes uh, it can couple up with visualization, uh, like you were happy uh, by the seaside, 
uh, by the place of your favorite place that you have gone to before. You you like to be there again. You like to actually smell the flowers in the garden, the breeze that passed through on your face. So those kind of a thing. You can actually visualize all those things that you have gone through before and then you can focus on the breathing uh, much better. So you have to be uh, mindful about your uh, breathing rhythm and also you must see that your movement is proper. So right now, okay, again, uh, so basically right now, why don't we go back to our position to practice the mindfulness. So I hope each and every one of you and I hope Felicia can actually start the music on. So I uh, please uh, find a nice environment for you. Uh, if you are sitting on the chair, uh, hopefully it will be very comfortable for you. Uh, hopefully also, uh, you know, take away all the distraction, your phone or whatever it is. All right. And then uh, try to be mindful about your breathing. All right. So let us be comfortable, right? Okay, Prof. Can I uh, can I uh, can you stop sharing so I can uh, share the okay. music? So I'll, I'll stop the share. Yeah, you just stop the sharing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Um, is the sound too soft? Okay, let us do it for one minute. A little bit louder. A bit louder. Huh? Okay. Okay. All right. Let us take one minute for this exercise. Right? Sit quietly, sit comfortably. Uh, it doesn't matter whether actually your, your chair is not really that so far. You can't sit straight up. It's okay. Don't worry about that. We are, we are not doing the breathing meditation yet. We just want to focus on the breath that we have. Right? So, uh, in one minute, I want you to count your breath. Do it for at least, if you can. Right? Just 12 breaths per minute. For that one, try to count. If you've got a timer, just set your timer for one minute. Now sit quietly. Right? If you feel that you can focus better with your eyes closed, gently close your eyes. Comfortable yourself. Put your hands by your side. All right. And you can. to do it right but make sure that you can feel the breath breathing into your nose While you are doing that, try to feel the sensation when the air is passing through your nostrils, when it goes into your lungs, how you feel. Just try to appreciate the sensation. We are still sitting. Can't hold anymore, just breathe down. Remember your count, it's the fourth breath now. Feel the sensation, the warm air passing through your nostrils. Hold on as much as you can. 
you creating you can imagine as two uh, three link and uh, paper right in front of you and you can do as possible by printing until your abdomen is compressed we can ignore any hand distraction just focus on your breath If your one minute is up, yes, you can just stop your exercise and try to see how many breaths did you take in that one minute. It's okay if you feel if you need about eight per minute, it is still alright. You can create and try to exercise yourself eight breaths per minute. That means you're very slow, very deep, relaxed, diaphragmatic breathing. Take it slow and slow. Okay, the one minute is up for me. Actually, I was actually doing it uh, rather very slow. Mine is just about 10 breaths per minute. And uh, just wonder whether, uh, what kind of a sensation that you have uh, while you were doing this exercise for one minute uh, before we try to move it for two minutes now. All right, uh, maybe uh, anyone want to share? Nurin, uh, Azril, Juan, Shakir. Anyone want to share how you feel about it? Yeah. Uh, maybe Felicia or Coach Francis or can I help. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you do it. Uh, but I do. I got twenty-one breaths per minute. <laughs> Okay, it's all right. <laughs> that seems to be fast breathing. I'm breathing uh, fast. It's just like my normal breath. Then yeah. oh, I like. Okay. Uh, do you feel relaxed with that kind of a number of breaths? When you had 21, which is more than the normal um, uh, rate that we allow for normal breathing. Uh, if it becomes 21 or more, uh, it can easily actually uh, make you how should I say, tense, because you possibly will reach into what we call 
hyperventilation. And later, if you're stressed up, it's easily for you to become tachypnea. I mean, your breath is very, very fast. And if the breath is fast, you're not actually able to get a proper oxygenation exchange. So uh, maybe after this, we can try to even slow it down. Uh, okay, just now, I was not telling you what was, what was the count that you can do. Okay, uh, why don't now, uh, yeah, anyone else maybe? Anyone else? Thank you for that sharing. Anyone else want to share? Uh, hi, Dr. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Azriel. Can hear you well. Can hear you well. Silakan. Can uh, uh, yeah. So, um, saya cakap bahasa Melayu boleh kan? Boleh, boleh, boleh. boleh. Ah, okay, okay. Silakan. Uh, so, uh, so, saya nak saya punya nafas dalam tujuh ke lapan macam tu, dalam satu minit tu. But then, uh, badan saya macam shaking sikit. Saya tak, tak sure kenapa. Yes, yes. Okay. Itu adalah uh, badan yang belum biasa dengan that kind of a breath. Jadi dia sebenarnya macam kita kata kalau terlalu slow uh, kita takutlah basically uh, the exchange tak berlaku dengan baik juga and then the, the retention of carbon dioxide kat dalam tu. That's why you rasa badan you macam gigih betul sikit. So basically kalau boleh uh, regulate it itu tujuan kita nak regulate. Uh, the best is to have breath lah. That means uh, not too slow because too slow macam seolah macam sebenarnya You tak, you tak tarik nafas. So, badan you tak biasa lagi. Uh, maybe Coach Francis or Coach Felicia can uh, help out with regard to how actually kalau you dah biasa exercise. So, Azril, are you a, a sports person? Active person? Um, I used to jog dalam tiga minggu sekali lah. Hmm. But sebelum tu saya ada main, memang main sport pun. Hmm. But sekarang saya kurang sport. Sport tu sport apa? Uh, before this, saya ada main basketball. Then, since PKP, saya banyak jogging lah. Hmm. Okay, Coach Francis. And sekarang Francis. memang dekat rumah, memang tak ada buat apa. Hmm. Okay, okay. Itu yang kata tadi, badan pun terkejut eh. Sudden stop, uh, dia macam apa dia panggil. Uh, badan dah not used to it anymore mungkin. Uh, kita tahulah PKP ni pun dah lama sebenarnya. Hmm. Bukan benda yang singkat Kita badan dah nak kena re-adjust balik tu Ya mungkin right. uh, ya saya boleh uh, bantu bagi uh, penjelasan sikit lah Alright so terima kasih Azriel I think um, kalau kita dah tahu kan Kalau kita dah biasa main sports uh, Kalau ialah of course kita musim PKP Ramai pun dah kurang aktif Dah hilang motivasi nak buka kat rumah So um, even that kalau kita tak exercise, kalau tadi cakap macam tiga minggu baru nak sekali pergi jogging kan Lepas tu uh, banyak lagi of course faktor-faktor dia lah um, Salah satunya uh, kita panggil detraining kan So kalau dah biasa main sport dan sebagainya, tiba-tiba kita tak aktif um, So of course your body will go back to, uh, will actually restart Have to restart back lah, kita panggil detraining kan uh, So uh, Azriya cuma perlu take, take a, uh, in, not just the exercise, mungkin dari segi tidur Uh, sebab kalau kita pun duduk rumah pun tekanan mental kan uh, So kena uh, banyak uh, dari segi uh, jaga tidur, kualiti tidur, jaga kualiti pemakanan, hidrasi uh, So semua tu penting lah So of course kalau boleh uh, kita kan uh, boleh lakukan 5,000 hingga 10,000 langkah setiap hari uh, Tak lari pun, tak jogging pun tak apa, walk je So of course uh, dia akan uh, efek kita punya heart rate lah So of course kita punya breathing and everything So very very important Kalau, kalau kita yang dah biasa uh, main sports dengan yang bersukan Memang kena jaga heart rate kan So uh, semua tu akan mainkan peranan uh, Dalam kita punya uh, Of course lah kita punya breathing So kalau dah biasa uh, fast pace kan Kita kena slow balik uh, So apa yang Prof uh, berkongsi tadi adalah uh, Dia punya Uh, kita Barang kita tak biasa kan So kita kena, kena train balik lah uh, Kalau buat sekali memang tak jadilah Kita kena buat ni sebagai satu benda yang uh, Sebagai satu tabiat uh, right? So uh, take, take, take two steps back Tengok balik tidur Tengok tengok balik pemakanan uh, Tengok balik kita punya Bila kita uh, 
uh, di bawah tekanan, ada stres, apa yang kita lakukan. Uh, so, itu semua mainkan peranan lah. So, of course lah kalau boleh uh, balik pada exercise, uh, carilah grup kawan-kawan ke boleh uh, buat grup workout kat rumah dan sebagainya. Kalau jogging sekarang individu, secara individu boleh kan lah. So, uh, cuba slow slowly start back lah. Yeah. Coach Francis, you have anything to add on? Yeah. Ya, yeah, Prof. Asri, is it? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, biasanya, uh, you pernah berenang? Boleh berenang? Um, saya beginner swimmer lah sebab memang okay. jarang. Okay. Uh, berenang tu, kalau kita nak berenang dengan laju, dengan dengan jauh, kita mesti mahu sangat tenang. Sebenarnya penafasan itu yang boleh membawa kita jauh. So biasa ni ah dia hembus banyak. Okey, lepas tu dia ambil sikit kepala dia angkat sikit saja dia tarik nafas. Dia bagi udara masuk. Kita kosongkan sebenarnya. Okey, kosongkan itu punya paru-paru. Jadi udara tu bila pressure tu rendah, dia punya pressure tinggi, dia akan tolak udara tu masuk dalam. Jadi uh, momentum itu sebenarnya uh, biasanya you, you, you rasa you tarik nafas, lepas tu you kena tahan sekejap kan? Tidak. Tarik, tarik lebih laju, uh-huh. okay, tahan di empat ke lima kau, okay, pulang uh-huh. pada you punya button, lepas uh-huh. tu hembus macam mesti dua kali ganda. Lebih lambat daripada you sedut. You sedut, okay, kalau sedut satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, lapan. You tahan uh-huh. lima, you, lepas tu you tahan. Lima, empat, tiga, dua, satu. Lepas tu okay. you hembus melalui mulut macam tiup lidi tu, you ke bilang satu, dua, tiga, lapan. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Lagi panjang sikit daripada yang dia sebut. Oh. Jadi uh, kalau itu momentum sudah okey, you tak boleh tak boleh uh, shaky. Okay, oh. no problem. Beginner mesti macam tu lah. Uh, okay. So sekarang, you sudah tahu teknik dia. You, you belajar. Selalunya you, bila you nafas, you boleh ketara sedar tu, nafas tu sudah masuk melalui hidung. Uh, okay. Lepas tu, keluar ni, you tiup pelan-pelan. Okay, you kena mentally breathe. Masa you boleh tarik, you tarik tu lebih lebih jauh sikit, tarik, relax. You tarik yang segar, yang baik, yang bertenaga, yang baik. Lepas tu, you hembus, ya, semua tension. You relax, you, you, you hembus. You lepaskan tension sekali. Ha, okay? Cuma cuma nak bagi dia macam music lah. Dia mesti ada, dia punya beat kan. Ha, no problem, it is a small matter. So, teruskan. Yang penting buat asas you, jangan fikir teknik. You hanya tahu, oh, you sudah nafas. Oh, you sudah hembus. You tahu tak, kita, kita nafas 22,000 kali sehari. Tapi berapa kali kita boleh ingat? Ha, hanya yang kita boleh ingat, yang kita ada ketara sedar saja. Dan tadi Prof cakap satu benda yang sangat penting. Ha, penafasan itu ubat. Ha, nah, kalau mental kita tak sihat, semua tak sihat. So itu begitu penting. You tahu dia punya prinsip dulu. Lepas tu you ada minat untuk pergi belajar. Ha, jangan fikir meditasi lah. Ini itulah. Jangan fikir macam tu, okay? Tapi kalau you boleh regulate you punya nafas, you punya jiwa akan jadi tenang. You boleh tarik yang baik, you boleh lepaskan semua yang tension tension semua. Okay, back to you, uh, Prof. Thank you. Ha. Okay, thank you, thank you, Farisa. Thank you, uh, Coach Wong. So basically, uh, I think inilah mulaan kita dapat lihat uh, our current state. Uh, Nurin tadi 21 breath per minute, Azril 7, 8 breath per minute. Tetapi kalau 21 breath per minute pun dapat merasakan badan tu yang sebenarnya tidak tenang and less than 12 breath per minute pun rasakan badan itu tidak mencukupi dapat oksigennya kerana terlalu slow dan sebagainya. Okay, so right now, our focus for this time until bila-bila, okay, try to rangekan antara 12 to 15 breath per minute. Kalau dapat 20 pun tak apalah, okay. Tetapi yang paling penting macam apa yang Coach Wong kata tadi. Okay, there are few methods yang kat sini nak disebut. Coach Wong tadi refer kepada 478 method. Take in for four count. Hold on for seven count. And breathe out for eight count. Tapi kalau you rasa susah sangat tak apa. Take in four count. Hold on for maybe another four count. Tapi breath out. Mungkin longer lagi lah sikit. Ha, tadi seven count pun boleh. Eight count pun boleh. 
Sebab ada setengah orang nak hold pun lambat susah. So, tarik four count. Dan dalam masa tu, imagine lah apa yang you tengah tengah breathe in kan tadi. Macam saya cakap tadi. Breathe in all the positive energy. Breathe in all those. Macam kata tadi, the good smell ke, the good feeling of things around you. Even apa yang you rasa selesa untuk you, you try to breathe in. And then when you breathe out, it's like you are blowing away everything yang ada border dalam diri you tadi. So let us go back into the situation again. Okay, kali ni, alright, we will still do one minute. Alright, and go back into your position. Malaysia will help you with the music so that to put you to a, a, a situation you feel that it is more comfortable. So once again, just relax yourself in your chair or or if you want to do whatever position that you think is very comfortable for you, put yourself there and start your timer for another one minute and try to achieve, even though it is slow, easy breathing, but not too slow. So you use the count, kalau ikut box breathing, they guna kan count, four in, four hold, four out. Tetapi as what Coach Wong kata, breathing out tu biar lama sikit so that you biasakan dengan itu so we try this uh, don't worry about 478 numbers but as long as you can do it right? breathing out is much longer than breathing in hold on to maybe yang berapa lama you need ok so put your back, yourself back into the position right we got one minute to do this exercise again okay, so let's keep yourself relaxed close your eyes gently don't force yourself don't feel stress, don't feel strain. Try to actually wiggle your body to relax everything first. Start focusing on your breath. Breathe in correctly, slowly. Maybe counting four counts. Get slow and easy, don't rush. Feel the good warm sensation in your posterior, in your uh, passage. Feel your muscles are getting relaxed. Don't try to force it. Thank you. 
Okay, I think it's more than a minute already. All right. 